Hi there, it's Paul here from the House of the Outsiders, and thank you for dropping by. I am back with a, another journal page, <laughs> not a whole journal, just a page. Um, slightly different to what I have been doing recently, because this is the book, I just quickly flipped through the book that you saw last month that I was working, because last month was all about me doing some collages to see if I could come with some weird character ideas that I could then draw and use in pages. It's sort of like try and come up with something a bit different than if I had to try to do it in my head because I will stick to what is comfortable for me and so I thought if I collaged it might bring out something new. So anyway, picked out this chicken feed guy and I've begun um, in how I would normally start which is to grab my sketch pad and just sketch it out in pencil. Um, I have tried the tracing over method but I find that if I do that I stick a little bit too rigidly to the design. At least if I draw it um, I can alter it ever so slightly uh, as I wish. And anyway, well I've done it as a pencil did and this is kind of a little extra step. I think I did it just for the camera because you can't see it in pencil is that I inked it in. Um, not something I needed to because the next step is something that's very new for me and <laughs> shown me doing this before is uh, to scan it in and then ink it in digitally. Now I normally do this on my computer on uh, Illustrator and Photoshop. I've been doing it for years and I've you know, got that down to pat. I can do it subconsciously and mislead, blah blah blah. But uh, there's a lot more designers that I follow who I have been seeing using the um, Apple Pen and um, an iPad and I thought it's I mean I have used the electronic styluses before but they've always been very clunky and I've given up never felt practice but the Apple Pencil seems to have been given rave reviews by everybody because it does almost act like a, um, a proper pen so I have invested in it and uh, there's a software program called Procreate uh, procreate, let's say it properly, and um, I'm having a go at using it. So this is good practice for me <laughs> to use the uh, art journal pages to kind of draw these characters uh, with with this program. I'm I'm hoping <laughs> that I will look like like with most things creative that I will look back in a few weeks or a few months and I will see how clunky I am at using the um, tools and how much better I have got. So anyway, that was me. I have now created my character, so it's time to prepare the art journal background. And I'm using a new book. Everything's new for this one. <laughs> I've had this Dean Awakely Mixed Media book for a long time, and I've never touched it. As you see, I've been going into other art journal books. So I decided, well, if we're doing something new, let's use a new book. And um, this is... Slightly different book, slightly intimidating by being different because it's not just paper pages, which is what I'm used to working with. These are kind of fabric and canvas pages. So rather than choose which one I'm going to work on, I just open the book, pick the first page, and now I'm laying down some paint. These are paparazzi, paper artsy, um, fresco chalk paints, which I know don't need um, any gesso or preparing underneath. So I've started adding a a grey base layer. Now, as you can tell, I'm. This is slightly different again for me in the fact it's a grey background. I have. If you followed me on Instagram, you'll know that I've been trying it out on the iCads. Is normally I will put down a very bright coloured background and then add a bright coloured critter on top. And I thought, what would the contrast be like if I had a grey background and added my colourful critters on top would the contrast still be there so I'm playing about with that and the same with like the style of it. Um, I'm creating the background in a way that if you are a fan of Seth Apter <laughs> or if the great man is indeed watching himself I am not worthy. Uh, this is a technique that he creates backgrounds with which is kind of a monoprinting style where you paint onto a separate piece of card be it textured or plain um, and then you transfer it 
to the paper and it kind of gives you this very arty feel. So I started with a dark grey, I am monoprinting the kind of light colour on top and then when I'm happy with how it looks I go back to the dark colour I first used and I'm going to put that on top just to quieten down the light colour and I also noticed that I got a lot of the, the light paint still on the brush so I've kind of dry brushed over it as well just to give some extra kind of texture and also to dry to get rid of all the paint and use it up. So yes the dark grey over the top is a bit like what I do with the sponging it's when I sponge something light on top I use the the last thing I do is get the original background colour and then I sponge that on top it kind of just brings everything back down and I could have left it like that I think the background looked had this kind of concrete style to it I liked it um, but I thought well I'll add some more visual interest <laughs> you know what it is with backgrounds I know they're supposed to be backgrounds and not the things you pay attention to but uh, sometimes the creation of a background can be great fun you can make really nice backgrounds backgrounds that you don't really want to um, start covering up with other things so uh, yes I'm I'm afraid I'm guilty of that of concentrating far too much on backgrounds at times but I have to say still using the same two colours of paints just these two uh, neutral colours I've loved sort of like creating first of all that kind of concrete background and then uh, stenciling on top and I've kind of only used two stencils I think I've used the light colour through the fleur the um, not a really, what is it, it's a, a, a damask, damask one and the mosaic uh, I did with the dark colour. Anyway, background created. I have now, off camera, gone and taken my little digital character, put him onto my computer, printed him out and cut the piece of paper down and now it's ready for colouring. Now I think this is the only... Uh, I was going to redo this bit because I've used uh, my ink tents blocks as watercolours and yeah it wasn't things I'm used to using watercolours and it didn't quite turn out the same as watercolours <laughs> the, the, the effect was a bit blotchy and I know there's no mistakes in art journaling and that is practice and learning and uh, same for me too things I have my kind of methods that I've been doing for god knows how many years um, and there's a part of me that wants to stick to those safe <laughs> you know the safe things that I know how to do and there's a part of me thinks well I, I don't learn if I don't use different products and different and, and learn how to work with them so happy to sort of like put the intents down and yeah but as I said it was a bit too blotchy I think I did prefer the look of the watercolours and then um, I got my Poscas and I think I used the wrong one for shadowing. No, I shouldn't say that, should I? No, that is wrong. I am terrible at crit Well, no, I'm really good at criticising my own artwork. When I'm seeing it on screen as I'm talking, I can see everything that I wished I hadn't done or thought I could have done better, etc, etc. However, I have now coloured it. I think, actually, the guy doesn't look too bad when, when I look at it in hindsight. As I cut him out, I've used lovely bright colours because I, I thought well if I, I use the brightest kind of pinks and lime, lime greens and yellows these are very bright colours and if I'm going to sort of like see this contrast between grey and a colourful cat I might as well go as over the top as I can <laughs> so that's the critterdom and um, now it's time to sort of like set the scene for him. Now I have just floated characters onto a page and uh, to see what that's like and I want to try a different way of seeing how to do it so I've kind of given him a little hill to sort of like <laughs> stand on, see whether it places the character. Um, which yes it's worked and I thought I would doodle um, doodle some flowers onto the onto the a hillside I just thought well let's just use geometric shapes colour them in uh, see how it goes a lot of what I'm doing today is a lot of the dip my toes in and say do I like this do I like this um, and does it look a bit too cartoonish does it not look arty enough is cartoonish 
how I like it to be. It's um, what I like it to look more artistic. It's the thing is I'm not planning any of this. I'm not sketching it beforehand. This is very much a play by it. As you know, because I say this when I do my pages, I'm always saying I'm playing this by it because really I do just open a page up and and see what happens <laughs> I have a rough idea that I know I'm going to draw something that sits on top or I'm going to carve something and I know that the background's going to have a border or something like this so I've drawn my little background drawn my hill with its little geometric flowers and now I'm going to stick my or glue my little critter onto it and yes I've, from a design point of view I'm beginning to think it's a little on the crowded side <laughs> maybe I could have planned those flowers out a little bit better but again this is that critical voice of mine um, that sort of like says yes it could be done a different way but the voice that says that it doesn't matter in our journal that it's that there are no rules that voice is very quiet <laughs> the big loud voice is that one that turns around and says there are rules if you want your artwork to look good there are rules um, and I'm breaking every single one of them <laughs> so the stage I'm doing at the moment, I have taken a, a fat Posca black pen and I drew my border and then I took a slightly thinner one and I doodled within that just to make it ever so slightly darker. So the final stage is now to add my quote. So um, I think I have bored you enough in how I find my <laughs> sort of like inspiration for quotes. I think this is uh, a Lauren Bacall quote uh, from an advert she did for coffee or something and one of the I heard it on a podcast and this um, I think this as I said the line from Lauren Bacall was my favourite time of day is night and so um, I thought brilliant that will fit in it's perfect length and then you'll see I also found once I'd written um, written in my text that there was a couple of spaces so I filled them with some doodled uh, flowers and I'm hurrying up because I know that this is the last little bit I am um, adding the extra little details to the text and then that's the page finished in all its glory uh, for good or for bad <laughs> for me to now look at and say do I like how that finished and here we go the final page little critters some doodle flowers and a funny quote hope you've enjoyed my ramblings there will be uh, some close-ups coming up and thank you bye for now until next time bye